Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome again to Allen Temple Sunday morning worship and praise to the Lord. Amen. We are glad to be in the house. Tell me, is someone glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Are you glad God stopped by your bed this morning? Are you glad that God stopped by and woke you up this morning? I don't know about you, but I sure am glad that he stopped by my house and touched me this morning. So I showed up to give him praise and worship this morning. Amen. Amen. We would ask though all of those of you who can stand, please stand for our morning hymn. Our morning hymn is hymn number 450 in the blue and red hymnal and hymn number 508 in the yellow. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit and washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Yes, this is my story, and this is my song, and we're praising our Savior all the day long. Without any further aligning, let us all, as always, lift our mighty voices to an almighty God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. season. The wind was blowing so wonderfully yesterday and it was warm. So I hope that you let the wind take all your troubles away so that when you got here today, your focus is on God because that's the only reason why we are alive and it's the only reason why we're still here. 
So let's give God his do just reward. Let us lift him up. Let us praise him. But most of all, let us thank him through his word of prayer. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder, I have to consider all the world your hands have made. I see the glory of your grace and your mercy every day. Each time you allow any of us to wake up, we have something to be thankful for. Dear God, each time we have a little pain, we can yet still be alive to feel the pain. Everything God gives us is because he loves us. But Jesus, when you sat there with your father and you saw the state of mankind, you said, Dad, I'll be a sacrifice. Please, let me have a chance. And Jesus, in your birth, your life, and your resurrection, we saw the perpetuation of real love. We saw what love looks like. Where a man, a perfect man, would lay down his life for sinners such as us. And God, we thank you for your son. God, we thank you that you continue to be lenient on us. We thank you that you don't wipe us out in the middle of our sin. We thank you that you have kept us through all the ages of our lives. But dear God, right now, we ask for this grace, that you would dip this minister down in your pool of love, in your kindness of grace, and show him the mercy and the love that only comes from you. And that God, the words that come out of his mouth, allow them to be words to glorify, words to uplift, words to teach, words to show grace, and always words to show a way to a living God for a living people. So God, we ask you to continue to take care of us. We thank you for this church. We thank you for those who attend this church. We thank you for those who just visit us sometimes. Dear God, we thank you that we can be a light on a hill where all can see that you still are in the saving business. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus. 
church said amen. amen. Saints of God, this is a good day to be alive. Oh, oh, oh. One of the founders of the Methodist denomination, Charles Wesley, penned these words in 1749. He said, and are we yet alive to see each other's face? Glory and praise to Jesus give for his redeeming grace. Preserved by power divine to full salvation here. Again in Jesus' praise we join and in his sight appear. What troubles have we seen? What conflicts have we passed? Fightings without and fears within since we assembled last. But listen to this. But out of all the Lord has brought us by his love. And still he doeth help afford and hide our lives above. We thank God just for the opportunity to be in the land of the living today. Before we go any further, I want to give you some news that I want us to be praying for. Uh, the Reverend Ronald Estridge, his wife, um, uh, when I got here, he was on the staff. He has since you know, moved on as pastoring his what was pastor, he's uh, been supernumerated at this point. Uh, but his wife, he and his wife in African Methodism seem to have started here, or at least were here for a long period of time. His wife has been extremely ill. My understanding is, is that she had a massive heart attack and while they were transporting her, she had another heart attack. She's fighting now kidney failure and some other systems failures. And so, uh, Ms. Mary Holly Smith called me and I gave him a call a few minutes later and talked to him. And I wanted him to know that Alan Temple is praying for his wife and for his family. But when I say that, I want you to understand that's just not talk. When I tell you, Fran and I are praying for you, Fran and I are really going to pray for you. And since I told the man of God that we will be praying for his wife, the woman of God, I wanted to pause right here now in this service and pray. Eternal God and Father, first of all, we say thank you for health and strength, for the activity of our limbs, for all of the things we just take for granted. We understand this morning it was not our alarms on our cell phones that woke us up. But it was your finger of love that shook us this morning and has started us on a new day's journey. We have conflict, God, within the household of faith. The woman of God First Lady, not just of Ron Esther's life, but most recently of St. Paul and Amy Church, is literally God fighting for her life. Because we know you, the author of life, we come to you and only you. Your word says, are there any sick among you? Let him or her call for the elders of the church the elders will lay on hands, and the sick will become well. Even though we are not touching her physically, right now we reach out in the spirit realm, touch her as she lays in Drake Hospital right now, confound doctors, God, change around system failure in the name of Jesus. And we'll be so careful, God, to give your name as due praise. And the people of God said, amen. amen. If you believe God's going to do it, come on, put your hands together and give him praise. The, the home governing services of Mr. James Isabel will be Monday, May the 2nd. The visitation will start right here at 930, and the service will start at 11 o'clock. On Sunday, May the 8th, which is Mother's Day, now, ladies, I'm just giving this message now, all right? Don't kill the message. I'm giving the message. 
on Monday, May the 8th, they're asking all women for Mother's Day to wear a hat, all right? Y'all don't seem too excited about that. Can, can they wear a baseball cap? That, that's a hat, ain't it? Well, I'm gonna leave that up to y'all. They're asking y'all to wear a hat. We need you to continue to do your member update forms. Please, everyone who has not do, done that, would you please do that? The forms are in the vestibule. We're also still trying to update our sick and shut-in list. Um, and if you know that anyone is sick, please let us know or shut in. Now, we're certainly going to get some duplications, but we'd rather have the same name 10 times than not have a name at all. Is that all right? Okay. How many blessed folk do we have in the house today? Okay. Y'all didn't hear me. How many folk this morning had clothes for their back and shoes for their feet and food for their stomach? And, uh, okay. We asked that the ushers would prepare themselves to come down, understand that the God that we serve loves a cheerful giver. All things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, o Lord. and of thine own. And of thine own. Please remain standing. Our scripture reading this morning will come from the book of Mark in the New Testament, chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 
through 22. As Jesus was walking down a road, a man ran up to him. He knelt down and asked, Good teacher, what can I do to have eternal life? Jesus replied, Why do you call me good? Only God is good. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Be faithful in marriage. Do not steal. Do not tell lies about others. Do not cheat. Respect your father and mother. The man answered, Teacher, I have obeyed all these commandments since I was a young man. Jesus looked closer, closely at the man. He liked him and said, There's one thing you still need to do. Go sell everything you own, give the money to the poor, and you will have riches in heaven. Then come with me. When the man heard Jesus say this, he went away gloomy and sad because he was very rich. The reading God's word for God's people.
about you, but the song said, He has done marvelous things. So we praise ye the Lord, through whom all blessings flow. He has done marvelous things. I don't know about you, but he's done some marvelous things for this preacher right here. Because a month ago I had cancer and now I don't. He has done marvelous things. That's why I'm here to praise ye the Lord. Yes, sir. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come right now. I come as an empty vessel, Father, for you to fill me up with your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, yes, I come to praise ye the Lord, for you truly have done marvelous things. Now I ask you right now, and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you are my rock and my redeemer. Anoint me, Father, and let my words be your words through me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Church, I tell you, the devil has been trying hard for this word not to be preached today. I had everything done yesterday. I only had to do two little pages when I got home from doing my little work. Thought that I was just going to go in there and have it all ready. But the devil, he tried to come in. Not only did he broke my lawnmower down about three times, thought I was going to be stranded out here in the middle of nowhere. But all I did was just pray. Because I know a God who answers all prayers. And the Lord got me through that little the work. But I get home and then I type up my little pages, go to press print, and lost the whole thing. I said, no, this can't be. But the devil is a liar, ain't that right? So all I did, I just had to work a little harder and I just had to work a little later and just get the word out for what God gave me. If you can't stand, I'd ask you to stand for the reading of scripture. I'm reading from the New International Bible. Mark 10, 17, through 22. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit in, in eternal life? And why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false witness testimony. You shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. Teacher, he declared, I have kept these since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. You may be seated. A, young, a, a rich young ruler came to Jesus asking him what good thing he could do to in, inherit eternal life. And the truth is, there is no good thing that no one can do to a, inherit eternal life. I would like to talk to you this morning from the subject, come as you are, but don't leave as you came. Church, I was talking to someone and discussing the church and what we all need to do to grow the church to the next level. You see, this church has had some major accomplishments uh, through the years, and with the biggest one being we're about to pay off this mortgage. Amen, somebody. But what must we do to get to the next level for our church? You know, just paying off the mortgage isn't enough. God got, has got more bigger plans for us. We just accomplished one level. Now we got to go to the next level. The thought began to resonate in my spirit. I knew it was a thought that must be examined from the pulpit. 
I know this is a very familiar text, yet there are some treasures and truth this morning that should help and encourage us in our journey with the Lord. A rich young ruler came to Jesus. He was a wealthy man and a young man. His eyes were set on religious matters, teachers, eternal life, and good deeds. He seemed willing to listen and eager to learn. He seemed a disciple in the making, a prime candidate to be a disciple in training. His certificate was almost signed, but his story has a dark end. It must have been quite a scene that day when Jesus was headed to Jerusalem to complete his assignment when suddenly this young man came running towards Jesus and knelt before him. As Jesus looked at this young man, he saw him in such promise and potential. That's why I love the Lord, because the Lord, he sees things in us that no one else sees. He sees, he sees beyond our faults. He sees beyond our hangups. He sees, sees beyond our flaws. He sees beyond and under our mask. He sees beyond our attitude. The songwriter and Marvin Sapp said it best. He saw the best in me when everyone else around me could only see the worst in me. Jesus sees it all. Now we have to stop sizing people up around us. We, you, we, we, we want to qualify those we encounter as if they are worthy enough for us to witness or evangelize. We must allow the Holy Spirit to show us their potential, what and who they can become in Christ. This rich young ruler came running up to Jesus, probably expecting a pat on the back. But look at the text again. Matthew, 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 Mark, and Luke all say that he went away sorrowful. You simply need to come as you are, and it is not how you enter, but how you leave. You would think at first this young man had everything. I believe somewhere along his journey, he encountered Jesus and heard him teach on eternal life. And this grew his curiosity, so he is excited once again to see Jesus in his view and runs to Jesus. Well, let me put my kickstand right here for a minute. No matter where we are in our journey, there will come a point in our life where we must come running to Jesus. And we must, there will be a time in our life where we will come running to Jesus. And if you have not experienced that for, uh, yet, in your life, just keep on living. There will come a time. Although this young man may have appeared to have much, although he may have appeared to have himself all together, Jesus recognized there was something missing. He had much, yet he lacked everything. His life was full, yet he was so empty. He had financial security, yet he was spiritually bankrupt. This young man asks, what must I do to in inherit eternal life? Jesus has, a way in in Jesus has a way of dealing with us to help us focus on what is really important. You would think at first this is a really good question, but in reality, he could do nothing to inherit eternal life, but he could get himself in position to receive the inheritance. What can I do to inherit eternal life? He knew it existed. He knew he didn't have it. He knew he wanted it, and he came to the right person to receive it. But when you encounter Jesus, it is not about how you come. It's about how you leave. This young man's sin was not against his brother. It was against God. Jesus had not asked him, of, Jesus had not asked him about the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. This rich young ruler had a God in his life. That's why Jesus said for him, go and sell all that he had and give to the poor and follow the Lord. You see, selling everything does not save a sinner. Giving to the poor does not save a sinner. Following Jesus of itself does not save a sinner. That would be nothing more than just religion. Uh, Judas proved to us that religion does not redeem a soul. This man had to get rid of his God. This young man had to understand faith, then follow Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Verse 21 says that Jesus loved him. Jesus knew that this young man had another God, yet he still loved him. 
This young man did not love Jesus in return. He loved something more than loving the Savior. And in Matthew 10, 37, it says that he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You see, we don't properly understand love today. See, we are in love today and out of love tomorrow. We confuse love with lust. We confuse love with beauty. We confuse love with assets. Church, Jesus must be the priority in our life. And when we love the Lord, the rest of our relationships will fall in place. If, if, if I don't know how to properly and fully love the Lord, how can I properly love you? That's the first thing that we must do and is commanded for us to do is to love the Lord. You must love the Lord enough to be willing to get rid of all these little gods that occupy our lives. The text tells us sadly that this young man went away sorrowful and grieved. Yes, church, come as you are, but don't leave as you came. It all starts with developing a love for Jesus. And some people come into the church week after week with no change taking, taking place in our life because they are kind of like Jesus. Uh, they say things like, Jesus is my boy. Jesus is my road dog. Jesus is my partner. None of this is due. You have to love Jesus as Jesus loves you. Jesus told him, you know the commandments. And with, all, and with an air of disappointment, as if he expected Jesus to tell him something else, he responds like this. He says, all these I have kept from my youth. He then wonders, what else does he lack? He didn't say, uh, he didn't, Jesus didn't say, well, you've arrived. Jesus didn't say, well done. He, Jesus didn't say you need more decency, more integrity, more courage, or more reverence. He answers this young man and tells him to go and sell. Not, and, and not just give away, but sell, then give away. If Jesus had been talking to Nicodemus instead of the rich young ruler, he would have said, get rid of your fear of the opinion of the Pharisees. If he had been talking to the Herod instead of the rich young ruler, he would have said, put away your brother Philip's wife. If he had been talking to Pontius Pilate instead of the rich young ruler, he would have said, stop washing your hands and be washed in the blood of the lamb. But it was the riches that stood between the young ruler and Jesus. And just like most of us, this rich young ruler was unaware of his own faults. Did you notice that Jesus only presented him with parts of the Decalogue that deal with man-to-man -man relationships? The other commandments have to do with God-to-man relationships. This young man had obviously not fulfilled those commands. And if he had fulfilled them, he would have immediately recognized Jesus as the Son of God. But he did not. And if you don't recognize Jesus, you will just leave the same way you came. The tragedy is that though he came to Jesus, he turned his back on him and went away sad and sorrowful. He did not get anything out of being in the presence of the Son of God. Aren't we the same way sometimes today? We see those around us who leave the presence of God every Sunday the same way they came in. In the church service, there's shouting going on. They ain't moved. There's shifting in the atmosphere. They aren't moved. The praise team is going to another level. They're not moved. The preachers are delivering a powerful word. They're still not moved. See, you come as you are, but don't leave as you came. And every time you come to church, every time you are in the presence of the Lord, you should leave different. But he went away. He went away. That short sentence contains the tragedy of a soul. This young man, holding his destiny in his hands, having the power to say yes or no, turned his back on the Savior of our souls and refused to follow him. When Jesus answered his question, notice how, he, how suddenly his interest, his eagerness, and his enthusiasm cooled off. Why? I'm glad you asked. It is because he, it is because he had great possessions. One moment he ran to meet Jesus and knelt at his feet. The next, he slowly gets up from his knees and walks away. 
carrying with him his fine gifts and materialistic heart. He did not doubt Jesus knew the way to eternal life. He was just not willing to pay the price. It's one thing to be disappointed in others, but it's another thing to be disappointed in yourself. Some may say Jesus failed because he didn't win this young man. But I'm here to tell you that it was not Jesus who failed. It was this young man. This is how I understand my calling. My calling is not to save anyone because I don't have any power. All power belongs to God. If Jesus didn't save all those he encountered, what makes us think that we are so gifted that everyone we encounter will come to Christ? And it gets on my nerves when I hear people of God and especially preachers say that they expect everyone they witness to get saved. This is a misunderstanding of the gift of God. Paul recognized there is a big difference between joining the church and joining the family of God. Paul said it best, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So it was not Jesus who failed this young man. It was the young man that failed in his decision. He had been concerned to keep the commandments, but more concerned to keep his cash. He bent his knee, but not his will. He bowed his head, but not his heart. He wanted heavenly treasures, but couldn't give up earthly treasures. He went away sorrowful, and Jesus let him go. Jesus didn't say, wait and come back. He didn't say, I'll compromise. He didn't say, I'll meet you halfway. This was the young man's only mistake. He went away. He left the same way he came. Jesus' message was simple. Come as you are, but don't leave as you came. He went away sorrowful, for he was rich. He had his eyes on things of this world. He had position. He had popularity. But let me tell you this. The devil is a master painter, and he can make the world look very attractive to us. But if you, got, but if you go that way, you, were, you will miss the thought of Christ. This brings me to my one and only point. If we want this church to go to the next level, if we want to do things for the Lord, if you, don't want to, if you don't want to leave the same way you came, you have to remember that it's all about love, love, love. The Bible says you must love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. Our obedience is how we glorify God. Jesus tells us we are to give to the Father of everyone. His family, uh, everyone in his family by loving one another. It is not, if it's not your intention to glorify God, to praise God who made you a member of his household and all the time, you disobey with us quite often if you want to respond to God's grace in your life, if you want God's love in your life, if you want to be a responsible family member, here's how you do that. Love one another. That is the answer. The answer to the question of whom to love is quite simple. Those who are part of God's family, that's who to love. All people, white, black, brown, doesn't matter if they're from this country, that country, all God's people, that is who we're supposed to love, everybody. The church today needs more men and women who are all about loving each other and building each other up rather than hating and tearing each other down. And as we come together in fellowship with each other and serving an extremely loving God, let us love each other as God loves us. We don't know what people have gone through to get where they have. Everyone wasn't born with a silver spoon given to them. They see your glory, but they don't know your story. Come as you are, but don't leave as you came. And we just had Resurrection Sunday. And have you resurrected your life? Have you resurrected your commitment to Jesus? You have to love Jesus and love God and be committed to his ways. Church, I just want to ask you one question. One question. Is there anybody here? Anybody here? Who loves my Jesus? 
Is there anybody here? Anybody here who loves the Lord? Is there anybody here? Anybody here who loves, loves my Jesus? I want to know if you love the Lord. Y'all didn't hear me. Is there anybody here? Anybody here who loves my Jesus? Is there anybody here? Anybody here who loves the Anybody here who loves, loves, loves my Jesus? I want to know if you love the Lord. Because you need to come as you are, but don't leave as you came. Just love Jesus. And he'll fix everything. Come as you are, but don't leave as you came. Praise and worship. Sing that. Sing that. Y'all help him. I really love the Lord. I really love the Lord. Oh, come on. Come on. Sing unto the Lord. I really love the Lord. Let's sing that again. Let's sing unto the Lord. Somebody sing, I really love the Lord. Anybody love him today? Come on, lift your voice up. I really love the Lord. done for me. I'm still alive, so he gave me the victory. Now come on, sing. I love him. I love him. I love him. God today for such a wonderful word. Somebody today here, somebody watching, you've come to Jesus many times, but the sad commentary about your coming to Jesus is you left the same way you came. If you're tired today of coming to him, and not leaving a different person. If you're tired of coming to him unsaved and leaving unsaved, we invite you now to come give the preacher your hand, but to give God your heart. 
Is there one here today? If you're watching this program virtually, we ask that you would type in today. And let me just help those of you who are virtual today. Let all of us even here bow our heads. There's a prayer that every sinner must pray one day. You repeat this simple prayer with me and mean it from your heart. God, I am a sinner. I come today because I want to be saved. And I heard the preacher say today, and I'm tired in my own life of just coming and leaving and coming and leaving the same way. So I confess now with my mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in my heart, God, that you raised him from the dead. And I declare that from this moment on, I am saved. I come to tell you, if you pray that simple prayer, the Bible says they now are having a party in heaven on your behalf. Amen. If you've accepted Jesus as your personal savior, we would love for you to give us a call. We want to make sure that we get you hooked up with a church. Whether you come to this church or not is not as important as you being involved in kingdom building. Some folk don't like it, but if you left the church mad, and God has delivered you today, I want you to go back to the church you left mad and see if God can bring healing in that place. And then if you can't find healing in that place, then you're welcome to come here. See, the problem with the church is we keep stealing the same four or five members from each other every year, and we're proud about it. When there's a whole world out there on their way to hell that we're doing nothing about. That's why I love what the preacher, what God said through our preacher today. Can you put your hands together for this man of God? Yeah. Let me just say to praise and worship, you've been wonderful today. Let me say to the musicians, thank you for your dedication and hard work. Let me tell you, all of the ushers, God love you for all that you do. Let me tell you, audiovisual, you're doing a fantastic job, and we just thank God for you also. Even to the greeters who are outside today. They even let me hang out with them this morning, the greeters. Amen. Yeah, they let me be on the outside, outside. In case I messed it up, Dwight, then when the folk got in, they could tell him, don't worry about Pastor. He, he got issues. Let me, let me greet you in the name of the Lord. Listen, y'all keep playing that. I like that song. If nobody else tells you they love you today, nobody else tells you they love you this week, let Alphonse and Francis Allen tell you, we love you. I didn't ask them, but I think I can speak for these preachers behind me. I can include the name of Sharon Coleman and Rob Barry and E. Finley Carter, they love you too. If you notice that every preacher that's been in this pulpit over the last few months has had one reoccurring thing, and that thing is love. We, we, we got to get this love thing straight. Not just in the church, but in our families. Not just in our families, but on our jobs. Not just with the people we like, but with the people we don't like. Because Jesus calls for us to love our enemies and to pray for those who despitefully use us. If I don't ever get a chance to say it again, it's just a pleasure being your pastor. Can I pronounce this blessing on your life? The Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen.